The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Governor Matt Bevan writes a new op-ed piece about the state budget ahead of what he's calling a major announcement that is set for about an hour from now. The rescues continue one day after a historic rainfall in Houston. And tailgating in style. A look at a new option for UK football fans this coming season. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning, and it's so nice to have you with us on a beautiful start to this Tuesday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. You said it. We are on a roll. What glorious weather. Really? And, you know, now we've had several days, and the, the trend continues for a little while. A little shower or two later in the week, and that's probably a good thing. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, and it's going to feel really nice once again today. The clouds overhead, that'll limit our temperatures from getting much higher than where we were yesterday. But nonetheless, like Bill was talking about, warm air in the forecast. No rain today, but it comes later on in the work week. We're 68 degrees right now in Lexington and Richmond, London 65, some 50s down south, and a very warm day in Sword, 82 degrees. The focus of the forecast is actually on those showers and thunderstorms that will be coming in later on this work week. Now I'm going to show you when they move on in, how that's going to affect your plans, how much you're expecting. Still got some ball games going on and whatnot, and I'm going to go over that in just about 10 minutes. See you then, and here is the news. Governor Matt Bevin says there will be a major announcement coming out of the state capitol this morning as we wait to see whether he will be vetoing any lines from the newly approved budget. The governor has scheduled an announcement with the cabinet finance secretary at 11 o'clock this morning. While the governor has not said what the announcement will be about, it's coming on the heels of his editorial piece on the budget in the Cincinnati Inquirer. This is a critical time in the Capitol because the governor has only a few days to decide if he will veto any lines from the bill or sign it as is. We'll stream the governor's 11 o'clock news conference on WKYT.com. And, of course, a full report on WKYT News at noon. Well, five people are facing charges in an assault and kidnapping case in Richmond. Police say Candace Brannon, Justin White, Michael Walters, Aaron Estel Bradshaw and Jordan Corneliuson are all accused of luring a woman to an apartment and beating her. Police say the victim was beaten when she denied giving police information about a recent shooting. Weeks after a robbery on the UK campus, police have made an arrest. Lexington police say a student was robbed at gunpoint last month inside a parking garage on Huglet Drive. The victim says two suspects hit him with an assault rifle and stole his car keys and Gucci belt. He told police he was meeting with someone to buy marijuana when he was robbed. Now, this morning, we've learned police charged Avian Camp of Louisville with robbery. He'll be arraigned today. A Lexington business hopes surveillance video will help solve a costly theft. Barney Miller says two men broke into work vans behind his store Sunday night and stole about $2,000 worth of tools. A security camera caught a man breaking the windows as another man pulled into the parking lot and they loaded up some tools. Today, a 17-year-old who was found murdered in a Mercer County field will be laid to rest. Tristan Cole's funeral is this afternoon in Harrodsburg. Police say he was shot to death last week. Another teenager has been charged with murder and robbery in the case. Happening today, a man known for promoting music is expected to plead guilty in a theft case. State police say Robert Lawson, the former director of the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame, stole more than $30,000 from several different organizations that he was supposed to be helping. Lawson is expected to plead guilty today in a Rock Castle County courtroom. Friends and co-workers are remembering a Lexington cardiologist who was killed while riding his bicycle. The Bourbon County Coroner says Dr. David Cassidy was hit by an SUV on Sunday while riding on Lexington Road in Paris. Dr. Cassidy died at the scene. State police say the crash was an accident. Cassidy's friends say he was an avid cyclist. Millward Funeral Home is handling the arrangements for Dr. Cassidy. A date and time for his funeral service have not been announced yet. A central Kentucky infant who police say was abused by her babysitter is now undergoing therapy. Police in Jessamine County say Erin Thompson was caring for the four-month-old at her home when the child was injured. Her case has been sent to the grand jury. 
Doctors say Kylie Jo had skull fractures, brain swelling, and broken bones. She's now at Cardinal Hill Rehabilitation Hospital. The state will pay Kentucky's two largest newspapers thousands of dollars to settle a lawsuit. That lawsuit was over access to documents for cases about children who have died or who have been injured from neglect or abuse. The Herald Leader and the Courier Journal say they were denied access to records for a case in 2009 and in 2011. A judge ruled the papers had the right to review the records. The state will pay them $250,000. You can read more about this story now on WKYT.com. Well, more rain is forecast for parts of Texas still reeling from deadly floods. At least five people died yesterday when torrential rainfall sparked flash flooding in the state. Omar Villafranca has the latest now from Houston, the city hardest hit. Rescue workers used military style vehicles to evacuate residents from this apartment complex in Houston as rising floodwaters rushed into their homes overnight. It was um, up to our knees inside of our apartment, but once we got out, it was to our hips. This woman escaped with just the clothes on her back and her two week old baby in tow. It's amazing and it's terrifying, especially if you can't swim. Houston got the worst of the high water when up to 20 inches of rain fell yesterday. Rajiv Singh's wife, Sunita, was among those who drowned when her vehicle got stuck at a freeway underpass. Cancer, this heart problem, all that I understand. But this, driving to high water in the middle of the city and there's nothing that could be done. As the water rose, dozens of horses at an equestrian center had to be saved. Residents of this apartment complex helped each other using air mattresses and refrigerators. It's just very frustrating. There is no hope for us, you know? Many Houston residents remain angry at city leaders over how long it took emergency teams to respond. Houston's mayor, Sylvester Turner, says the city hasn't forgotten about them. My primary responsibility is to make sure people know that the city sees them and that the city is responding to them. The governor has issued a disaster declaration for nine counties. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Houston. Now, people in the state affected by the floods could qualify for a tax extension. Polls for New York's primary are open this morning, and the momentum in huge delegates are up for grabs. Brooklyn born Bernie Sanders pounded the pavement and ramped up pressure, hoping to pull off an upset win in New York. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton has a 10 point lead over Sanders in her adopted state, from which she had been elected U.S. Senator. For the Republicans, if Donald Trump can capture more than 50% of the statewide vote, it would put him in a position to win all of New York's 95 GOP delegates. Even a slip of the tongue during a speech in Buffalo didn't seem to trip him up. And I watch our police and our firemen down at 7-Eleven, down at the World Trade Center, right after it came down. And I saw the greatest people I've ever seen in action. I saw the bravest people. The polls show Trump has more support in his native New York than Ted Cruz and John Kasich okay, combined. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he is, quote, increasingly optimistic that the Republican National Convention in July will go to a second ballot. The comment in a TV interview here in his home state of Kentucky seems to suggest that McConnell does not want Donald Trump to emerge as the nominee, despite his public stance of neutrality. Today, Kentucky Utilities and Louisville Gas and Electric will unveil the state's largest solar power facility. Construction of a 52-acre plant in Harrodsburg began last November. It features 45,000 solar panels. Once up and running, KU estimates the plant could produce enough electricity for around 1,500 homes a month. Well, Kentucky football fans will be able to tailgate in style this season. We should say even greater style. They're always in style, <laughs> right. but... Well, take a look at this. You'll see what we're talking about here. The 1865 Club will open this fall, and it will feature luxury tailgating suites with a kitchen, four HD televisions, heat and air, a full-size refrigerator, as well as a bathroom. Standard tailgating food and drinks are included. Located adjacent to the President's Pavilion, they will come with 30 passes per suite, but game tickets are not included in this, by the way. Well, if you're in the middle of that, my heavens, you might not need them. The price, six to $8,000 a game, 
or fifty thousand dollars for the season. <laughs> All right, there that, you have it. That's fancy, that is right? Style. Yeah, yes. that's right. More than just uh, standing out uh, behind the truck or a car, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. I'll keep it right here this mid morning. He's a real teacher's pet. You say that again. Take a look here. He is a British elementary school has a new reading coach, and he has four legs. That story coming up after Micah's weather. Another good looking day in the forecast. We are looking at those temperatures in the 80s later on today, but the temperatures start to drop off just a bit because of showers and thunderstorms. I'll show you when you can expect those coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Already at 68 degrees here in Lexington. We finished off at 84, which was about three degrees shy of the record. We did not reach it and we won't reach it today. Actually finish off in the lower 80s today instead of the mid 80s. But nonetheless, it's still a pretty nice day. 82 degrees. The clouds are starting to move on in. That does not mean rain for today. That actually means rain for the next few days, okay? Because the moisture is moving on in right now and just setting the stage for that energy to slide on in the next few days. But the rest of the afternoon looks just fine. I don't see any problems whatsoever. Hanging out on the back patio, walking around the neighborhood, that's a good call. There by 8 p.m., 7, 8 p.m. looks great. Then we head toward tomorrow and Thursday. That's where things change just a bit. Watch what happens. Our temperatures mainly, for the most part, stay in the upper 70s to lower 80s. Kind of depends on where you are. Some of this showing up with a little bit of rain that's keeping those temperatures down in the 60s. But for the most part, 70 degrees to 82 all depends on where you are. And all depends on if you get a rain chance over you. Tomorrow is a small chance of rain. We're talking 30, maybe 40 percent, and that's it. Then we go toward Thursday. Thursday's your better opportunity to see rain. We'll still be in the mid 70s. It'll feel quite nice. Remember, this isn't a total washout, and you're not expecting a lot of rain out of this, but it does look like scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder will be with us there on Thursday, too. Then we head off toward Friday. Here's your seven day forecast and what you can expect. Friday morning, the first half of your day is your best chance of rain on Friday. Then we go toward the afternoon and evening, and it slides on out of here. So if you have any plans toward the second half of your day on Friday, you should be good to go. But yeah, Thursday into Friday morning, that is your best bet to see some of that rain slide on in. And then you see toward the weekend, that's when you're looking at 70s and 80s in the forecast. This is a good looking forecast for the most part, except for those two days. It's going to be Thursday and Friday. But you can see no cold air anytime soon in the forecast. So all in all, Looks pretty good. Not all that bad. It's temperatures. I don't see a big hit of temperatures anytime soon. We'll take yeah. that. A little cooler right. there on Friday with the showers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, other than that, it looks real good. Thank you. Well, a British teacher is using some new tricks to teach children how to read. Kids are getting a lesson from the teacher's pet, and there he is, a two-year-old chocolate lab named Fernie. Students get the chance to practice reading to the dog, and they say he's a good listener. And Fernie shows off his special trick, too. The head teacher, Nick Gardner, says his hound can read, uh, but he only knows four words right now. Uh, teaching a dog a new trick, you know, takes some time. Can Fernie really read? Fernie can read in terms of he can recognize shapes on the flashcards and derive meaning from that and do what it says. Oh. <laughs> now, it took a lot of training and some treats, but apparently it has paid off. The head teacher says seeing Fernie read gives his students some added confidence that they can too. <laughs> Fernie's a good sleeper, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Good, yeah. Likes to rest as he's, uh, yeah, she, as he's listening to his stories. I think that's good. Well, Christopher Walken talks about the dysfunctional family fang. And a Hollywood power couple goes on camera to apologize. Terry Okita has your eye on entertainment. Longtime character actress Doris Roberts has died. She won four of her five Emmy Awards playing Ray Romano's nosy mother on CBS's Everybody Loves Raymond. Frank. No, come on, stop. <laughs> Roberts died in California Sunday at the age of 90. It was already the hottest show on Broadway. Now the hip hop musical Hamilton has scored this year's Pulitzer Prize for drama. Johnny Depp and his wife Amber Heard released a videotaped apology for sneaking their dogs into Australia. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. I'm truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. The couple brought their terriers into the country on a private plane last year. Heard pleaded guilty to providing a false immigration document, but avoided jail time. And setting a new standard for family dysfunction, Nicole Kidman and Jason Bateman star as the children of performance artists in The Family Fang. I'm not a child anymore. 
Christopher Walken is Father Fang and had some personal insight. I grew up in show business, and, and the more I think about it, I couldn't have had a more interesting education. When the parents disappear, the siblings face the toll of their unusual childhood. The film opens nationwide in May. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Terry Okita, CBS News, Los Angeles. And if you are looking for a new flavor for dinner, how does this fast, casual Mediterranean food sound? A sampling of what you'll find at Tzatziki's Mediterranean Cafe, next on WKYT. And tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $89 million. And Wednesday's Powerball jackpot is $227 million. We'll be right back on Mid Morning. Welcome back in. Great to have you along on WKYT Mid Morning. Fresh Mediterranean food right here in Lexington. Tzatziki's Mediterranean Cafe is now open for business. And to learn more about what we'll find at Tzatziki's, we're joined by Chris Morrison, the manager at Tzatziki's Mediterranean Cafe. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Tell us about the concept, Mediterranean food. What exactly uh, will folks find? Yeah, we are uh, fresh every day, everything we make in house. Uh, no fryers, freezers, or microwaves. Uh, we have Euro sandwiches, uh, fresh salads. Um, we have family feasts. You've got a uh, dinner option late, you know, running around, call self. I have uh, family uh, feed four people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a great concept. Uh, take a lot of pride in our food, and uh, hopefully you can see it in the food and taste it and come see us. <laughs> now, you are, are now officially open for business. Yes, Yesterday was your first day. Correct. Yeah, we hit the ground. How running. did it go? Uh, I like to say it was it was good to go, but it was always hectic. But uh, hopefully nobody saw the behind the scenes stuff. So uh, went well. The community was came out in full swing and uh, supported us, and we loved having everybody. And here we have yeah. some pictures of the food. Yeah. It really that, looks great. That's our uh, chicken cedar salad, and then our uh, shrimp feast there. Um, you know, it's a lot of pride. I mean, all those shrimp we we peel the shrimp every morning, and everything's cooked to order. Uh, that's our Mediterranean salad there. Um, you know, yeah. a Mediterranean diet uh, has a pretty good reputation right yes, now. Yes, yeah. So, uh, so what are some things that you're very careful about when you uh, prepare the food? Uh, we don't, uh, well, we have no fryers, freezers, or microwaves or anything like that. There's no fried foods. And we're not, you know, putting anything into the food that, you know, we feel is, is um, overdone or anything like mm -hmm. that. You know, it's just mm -hmm. clean, simple food um, with, with a lot of heart and passion. So... And well, hopefully you taste it. <laughs> sounds like a, a great option yes. for people. You also have a pretty exciting giveaway going on right now. Yes, what are you doing? Do. Yes, we're giving away a trip to Greece. Uh, it's a cruise. <laughs> uh, airfare is included. Um, you have until Thursday, uh, 11:59, to register, and then I think uh, Friday's the drawing. So you register in the store or where? Do you? Uh, on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah, find us on All Facebook, right. and there's mm -hmm. a link there. You just click the link and, and find us there. Hey, your location? So. You're out on Southland Drive. Yep, yep. Right? 117 Southland Drive. Uh, just make a left off Nicholsville Road, and we're right next to Hunan and uh, Columbia, in the same shopping center right there. And you said you intend to be very involved in the community and in other ways. Yes, yes. So uh, we partnered with uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we committed to build one house a year. Um, so we had a big event where we, we gave them a check and everything for this year. And, uh, you know, you'll see us out there as well with the hard hat on and uh, learning as we go because I don't know how to build a house. So I'm going to Well, teach that's me. part of it is yeah. that you'll be learning. That's yes. sweat equity. <laughs> you'll figure that. that. Um, so where are you located when people want to come on out? Uh, 117 Southland Drive, uh, mm -hmm. just right next to Hunan. And uh, we're in the same shopping center with uh, the Columbia uh, Steak Express and the new Hilton's right there uh, that opened up as well. So. All right. Good deal. Good. Thank yes. you. Appreciate well, thank you coming you. in. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, keep it right here this mid-morning. Yeah, we'll keep with the food theme. We'll check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next. And it uh, looks like dessert today. We'll check in on that in a moment. We are continuing that f food theme yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> You're going to want to have more than a fling with this no-bake layered cake. It combines all your favorite springtime flavors. Today in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, it is spring fling layered cake. After what felt like a really long winter, I'm excited to remind you that starting at midnight, spring is officially here. That means when it comes to dessert, it's time to think lighter and brighter. So what do you say we say goodbye to cobblers and crisps just for a while and hello to a cake that is truly what we call springtacular. We start by slicing a frozen coconut layer cake into one inch slices and placing them in a nine by 13 baking dish. On top of that, we spread a layer of our homemade filling that we made by combining some whipped topping with a package of frozen raspberries. Over that, we place slices of a lemon layer cake that we also picked up in the freezer aisle 
And like many of our recipes, feel free to mix and match the flavors of cake or use any brand you want, since there are no rules. And right before popping this in the freezer to firm up, we finish it with a layer of whipped topping. That's it. And when we're ready to dig in, all we need to do is cut it into squares. Maybe finish it off with a few raspberries and get ready for a dessert that shouts spring. You know, I hope you'll go online and get the recipe for what we call spring fling layered cake. So you can welcome in the new season with a tasty and lighter dessert. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fresh and springy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. You said you didn't know what it is. <laughs> it's just know that it's good. It's, it's good. good. It's good. Spring, it's as simple as that. Cake. I whispered that to you for a reason. I told on you. I said, I don't know what You'd he was like doing. You'd like it. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, here's the look outside. We're 82 <laughs> degrees later on this app. That's what we do here, okay? We just call each other out. 30% uh, chance of rain tomorrow. It's only a small chance, but the better opportunity actually comes on Thursday off into Friday morning. That's your best bet for some rain. Now, we do have some thunderstorms mixed in here and there. Now, as of right now, I'm not leaning toward any severe weather. That's something I'm going to be looking at, some of the data, as we take a break until noontime, and I'll get you updated on that. Okay, we'll have all the latest news at noon as well, including what comes out of the governor's news conference coming up at 11 this morning. We hope you'll join us then. Make it a great day.